Straight ahead on CCX News, a push for stricter tobacco ordinances. Why Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center could be the next communities to take on T21. Plus, a big surprise for a Noble Elementary first grader. What made her day so special? And later, we put you in the driver's seat of a foreign car invasion in Osseo. CCX News starts right now. Hello and thanks for joining us. Plymouth has a Tobacco 21 ordinance. Could the Brooklyn's be next? Uh, the Brooklyn's Youth Council has done extensive research to determine what impact tobacco has on youngsters in Brooklyn Center and Brooklyn Park. And Eric Nelson joins us now with more on that. Eric? Yeah, Alex and Mike, the Youth Council conducted research with eight focus groups in the Brooklyn's between the ages of 12 and 20. Their goal was to find out why certain kids smoke or use smokeless tobacco products. They discovered that the consequences can be devastating, the temptation is real, and that tobacco products are very accessible. The two primary reasons they use it is either for peer pressure or to relieve stress. Um, the stress portion was actually um, eye-opening for me. I didn't know that a lot of kids were under stress either from school, from problems at work or home. Um, so just knowing that they were using tobacco and tobacco products as an avenue to relieve stress was a big eye opener. In their research, the Brooklyn Youth Council found out that e-cigarettes and small flavored cigars are becoming more popular. The council also discovered that tobacco products are readily available in minority communities. In those areas, a lot of tobacco shops are near schools and libraries. One kid told them that the ads are everywhere. I can't get away from them. During our research, we found that a lot of youth are aware that tobaccos are targeted at low-income families and especially minorities, and they are specifically targeted just to those people. And as you go further away from low incomes, you find that other cities don't have that many tobacco uh, products associated with them. Now the Youth Council will be sharing their discoveries with the Brooklyn Center City Council. There is a good chance they will push for raising the minimum age of buying tobacco to 21 and for an increase in the cost of tobacco products. Mike? All right, thank you. A local lawmaker is making another pitch for the full legalization of marijuana in Minnesota. Representative John Applebaum, who represents the southern section of Plymouth, says the financial struggles of one of Minnesota's two medical cannabis manufacturers highlight the need to make marijuana legal for both medicinal and recreational use. Applebaum says full legalization will not only improve availability for those who need it for medical reasons, but he says it will, quote, create phenomenal economic benefits for our entire state. Applebaum introduced a bill last year to legalize marijuana in Minnesota. He is not seeking re-election. The Brooklyn Park Fire Department is in a period of transition with questions about its fire response model. The city, like others, has struggled to recruit firefighters. However, Brooklyn Park, unlike some other cities, requires its paid-on-call firefighters to have more advanced medical training. Brooklyn Park also does not require its paid-on-call firefighters to respond to a minimum number of calls. Previously, the city had a 40 percent requirement. We asked the mayor what he would like to see in its fire service model and he says let the new chief decide. We can't predetermine the model of the fire department and then hire somebody to come run it for us. Let's bring in a professional, let them do the analysis, um, fresh set of eyes and then talk to the council and then come back and say here's what I'd like to do. The Brooklyn Park City Council this week votes on a new chief. The city manager selected Elk River Fire Chief John Cunningham. A panel of representatives from North Memorial Healthcare, the St. Louis Park Fire Department, and Brooklyn Park Department heads gave input on the selection. The city of Crystal is the latest local suburb to warn residents not to flush so-called flushable wipes down the toilet. The sanitary wipes may be labeled flushable, but they're anything but, according to public works officials. This weekend, some flushable wipes became stuck together in crystal, causing a sewer backup. Robbinsdale also recently issued a warning about the wipes, saying they cause big problems for city sewer systems if they get flushed. 
This week, the city of Plymouth will gather resident input about potentially expanding the Plymouth Creek Center. The facility was built in 2000 and city officials say it's in need of maintenance and updates. The city's population growth has also made it difficult for the existing building to meet demands for space. The Plymouth Creek Center hosts recreation programs, senior activities and weddings. The first of three open houses on the Creek Center's future will be held Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Plymouth Creek Center. A first grader at Noble Elementary in Golden Valley got a big surprise Monday. Happy Wish Day, dear Janaya. Volunteers from the Make-A-Wish Foundation led students in singing Happy Wish Day to first grader Janaya Blanchard. Janiah found out during lunch that she's going to Disney World this week with her family. It was her wish after battling a life-threatening condition. Sister, and she's never been on an airplane before. She's never been on a travel trip like this before. She's never had to pack a suitcase, so she's very excited. She loves the Disney princesses, and when she was getting better in the hospital, it was Ariel specifically who really cheered her up. Janiah leaves midweek for her trip. Make-A-Wish volunteers also presented Janiah with a few Disney items today to get her ready for the trip. Well, still ahead, we get caught up in local business news, including growth for a Maple Grove restaurant. Plus, the offenses rule as Wyzetta and Hopkins tangle in a high-scoring softball battle. That's later in sports. But first, plenty of sun on Tuesday. Highs near 80. More than 400 students got some help today in charting their course after high school. A student leadership conference in Brooklyn Park was aimed at students who have some uncertainty about what's next, whether the question is which college is best for them, what to study, or even how to pay for it. So you hear about colleges, but you mostly hear about, oh, go to the U of M because it's close, or go to NDSU because it's close, but you don't hear about the technical schools that may help those students that want different careers, or you don't hear about whatever other college that may serve you a little bit better. There was also an opportunity for students to practice applying for colleges and, and jobs. It's one way the Northwest Suburban Integration School District works to help close the opportunity gap for several local school districts. One of Maple Grove's oldest family-owned businesses is celebrating a milestone this week. And in Brooklyn Park, the completion of a new commercial real estate project is a sign of an encouraging market. It's two stories in one in this week's Business Matters report. Long time ago, this is my dad and my grandpa. The family roots run deep at the lookout in Maple Grove. We've been family owned, the same family for 60 years. When Mike Canan's parents started this bar and grill in 1958, there was nothing but farm fields. Today, the lookout overlooks the growing city of Maple Grove, where it has become a community fixture, offering something for everyone. Our regulars are two to a hundred. We have the playground outside for the two-year-olds. Uh, we have great dinners for the all ages. And then you get into the weekends and stuff. We've got the great bands and our age changes probably to 25 to 40. 60 is the magic number this week as the lookout celebrates six decades of food and live music with evening specials through Sunday. It's a significant milestone, especially since this business keeps growing up 8% this year and it shows no signs of slowing as new customers keep finding their way to the lookout. We own a catering company, we own our concession company, we have food trucks, we just opened a new concession building in Champlin at Andrews Park, um, banquets, volleyball, I mean we, we have a big footprint. In Brooklyn Park, the finishing touches are all that's left on the second building of the 610 Commerce Center near 93rd Avenue and West Broadway. Currently, we're 60% leased in the building. We have another 80,000 feet still to lease, uh, but it's been great success so far, and we've had a lot of demand that we've seen. Hoping to tap into a younger workforce near the 610 corridor, businesses such as Hallmark Building Supplies and manufacturer Acroply have moved into this space. They manufacture 
manufacture the machines that create labels for a variety of different industries, um, like the beverage and pharmaceutical industries are examples. As CSM, the commercial real estate company, looks for one more business to move in, it's also eyeing nearby land for phase three of the Commerce Center. We're analyzing it currently and uh, we believe that it's a great opportunity for uh, a single tenant build to suit opportunity. Still ahead, car lovers put Osseo on their destination list. But first, it's a long battle as Champlain Park faces Osseo Park Center in an overtime girls lacrosse matchup. John Jacobson is in next. Jacobson with sports. It's a tight race at the top of the Northwest Suburban Conference in girls lacrosse with everybody chasing unbeaten Blaine. Two of the conference contenders, Osseo Park Center and Champlain Park, met up in a big conference game. First half, Osseo Park Center's Loria Boone looking for someone to pass it to them, decides to shoot it herself and scores. OPC's got a 3-1 to one lead. The Rebels come back. Lydia Brack, good pass to Clara Johnson. She scores, tying the game at 3. And the Rebels score twice more before halftime. Cameron Mayer to Kyler Shack here for a goal. And the Rebels are up 5-3 on OPC at halftime. Leading by two goals in the second half, Champlain Park's Allie Kelly dodges one defender and goes in to score, and Champlain Park has a 7-4 lead. But the Crocs will rally. Rachel Manning from behind the net passes out to Sonia Coombs, who scores. And it's 7-6. The teams end up tied 8-8 at the end of regulation. Late in the third overtime, Manning passes to Boone. She finds an opening and scores. Osseo Park Center wins 9-8. They stay within a game of first place. And the Crocs will host Centennial in the big game on Wednesday. Cooper's girls lacrosse team has some tough conference games ahead in the Metro West. The Hawks, though, have been taking care of business in their non-conference games. Cooper at home facing St. Paul. Scoreless early in the first half when Cooper's Lauren Welly gets free. She'll shoot and score here. And the Hawks have a one to nothing lead. St. Paul's Grace Tillotson comes from behind the Cooper net. She turns and scores. That goal ties the game at one. Cooper's Kayla Johnson picks up a ground ball near the St. Paul net. And beats the goalie with her shot, and the Hawks have a 4-2 lead on the Bobcats. Still in the first half, a nice run to the net by Cooper's Maria Girding here. And Girding scores to make it 5-2. Steph Sorensen gets the final goal of the first half, coming out from behind the St. Paul net to score with 43 seconds to go before halftime. The Hawks go on to win 13-6. They're now 4-0 in non-conference games. The boys' tennis playoffs get started this week with section team competition. Two rivals met up in regular season action as Armstrong hosts Cooper. At number one singles, Cooper's Dominique Uzegua in the far court against Henry Scott. Deep forehand by Uzegua leads to a return into the net by Scott and a point for Cooper. Same match, Scott with a strong serve that's returned wide. And Scott wins the match and the Falcons dominate this match most of the day. Number two singles, Armstrong's David Wynn here in the near court. Nice forehand sets up a strong backhand, and Wynn beats Andy Columbus of Cooper. Third singles, Cooper's Toby Ryberg in the far court against Tony Rausch of Armstrong. Ryberg comes to the net, but Rausch with a well-placed passing shot gets the point, and he goes on to win 6-0, 6-0 for the Falcons. At number one doubles, Armstrong's Evan Axel and Ben Leeton execute perfectly here. They beat Fisher Zeman and Lucas Damon. Armstrong wins 7-0. Both teams are in Section 5AA where the team tournament starts on Wednesday. In softball, White Zeta was swinging for their first late conference win of the spring when they faced the Hopkins Royals in the team's second meeting of the season. First inning, top of the first, it's Hopkins, Morgan, Hawley. With a hit scoring Parker Stoddard, part of a three-run first inning for the Royals. Bottom of the second, Grace Noble. It's the low pitch to right field. This one will score two, and Wysetta takes a 4-3 to three lead on a two-out triple by Noble. Bottom of the third, it's 4-all. Anna Engman's hit plates Allison Miller. Trojans lead 6-4 after four. 
In the top of the fourth, the Royals draw even. Stroddard with a fly ball all the way to the fence. This scores Evelyn Barsic, and it's 6-6. Bottom of the fourth inning, the ground ball gets through the Hopkins infield and two runs score for an 8-6 White Zeta lead. Trojans are up 10-6 after five. In the top of the sixth, two on, two out. Madeline Burnt comes through with a hit to score two runs, cutting the White Zeta lead to 10-8. Royals add another run in the seventh, but White Zeta holds on for a 10-9 win. And a big win for the Osseo softball team as the Orioles rallied to beat Maple Girl 4-2. It's their first win over the Crimson since 2011. Live girls lacrosse tonight, Monday, on our website, ccxmedia.org, as Maple Grove plays at Armstrong. Mike and Alex, back to you. All right, John, thanks a lot. Still ahead, one of the hardest-to-find cars makes an appearance in Osseo. We'll hear from the owner when we come back. The weather couldn't have been better for a car show. Osseo was host to the 26th annual Vintage Foreign Car Show. Reporter Shannon Slatten explains how it's grown to be a kickoff to the car show season. This great little town is a walk-in town. There was quite a bit to walk and see this weekend as an invasion of foreign cars took over downtown Osseo. Lots of different cars to Austin Healy's Triumphs. Um, just a lot of different kind of, of wonderful cars. Alan Linquist helped bring this car show to town about six years ago. Started out with about two blocks, and now we go all the way from 81 almost up to County Road 30. He brings along this little beauty. The 1971 MGB. I bought it 30 years ago, and I've fixed everything on it. Car shows like this one bring together car lovers who like to talk shop, whether they're in one or not. It's the camaraderie. I think if you have a problem with your car, you call one of your buddies and they know how to fix whatever problem you have. So they come over. If they don't know how to fix it, somebody else knows how to fix it. Or maybe you just like to see what else is out there. I only like cars that nobody else has got. Michael Gondick has one of those hard to find cars. It's a Lloyd Alexander. It's a German car that's not made anymore. There's not many he's left. And this is actually the second Lloyd he's owned. He had his first one back in high school. All the kids had like 57 Chevrolets. I got 57 Lloyd. This car, like most of the others here, are cars that would make you look twice if you saw them when you were driving down the road. Here in Osseo this weekend, it's the perfect opportunity to look as long as you want. You don't have to own one. You can just look at them. It's just a, a, a delightful day to be doing this kind of thing. In Osseo, Shannon Slatten, CCX News. To participate in the show, you had to have a foreign car made before 1998. And just a little tidbit, Al Lindquist there, who you saw, says it could be his last year in the show. That's because he is selling his car. He just bought a Corvette. So that's American not, car. Not going to fly in the foreign <laughs> car show. That is all for us. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you back here again on Tuesday, starting at 4.